And uh, here is what my trade looks like. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, uh. I told you I'm risking upwards of two, three, four percent on this trade. I'm 99% deployed in crypto. Most of it is spot. Everything. I'm down like 30%. So I'm down seven million dollars. It's Black Monday, baby, and perhaps one of the worst days in the past 50 years for just general markets and Bitcoin. Certainly not safe. We have been in uh, a pretty hefty pullback right now. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> How confident are you that Bitcoin recovers here? Because personally for me, I'm pretty confident. I just think it may take some time, okay? There's a few reasons for this. Uh, one of the reasons being it's August, right? We've got September. Usually we get massive, massive dumps in September. But uh, really, we're talking long-term, right? Is Bitcoin still the best kind of currency and reserve asset? Is there a second best? There is no second best. So let's dive into this. We're going to go through the on-chain. We're going to go through a looming death cross scenario and a potential bottoming areas for Bitcoin, as well as all the trades I'm going to be looking for over the next week. Let's jump into this. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? So kicking things off with fear and greed, as you can see, down to a shocking 17 here. Really, really bad. Uh, obviously, usually when we get to areas this low, we do like to get big, big short squeezes, which is essentially just a massive pump towards the upside. Uh, we did try and get that recovery yesterday, but we'll see uh, how that kind of progresses and see if we can uh, get above certain levels for a recovery. If we are looking at ETF outflows and inflows here, we can see that, uh, yes, uh, we have had two multiple three-digit outflows in the millions uh, for Bitcoin, which is not great. Okay, this is actually really shocking for the market. We did actually see some inflows on Ethereum though, which is quite interesting. So people scooping that up and uh, not like a crazy amount, but um, 48 million is something you should probably not ignore on Ethereum side. So if we are looking at the macro index here, okay, what this is, it takes into account open interest, volume, volatility, and the on-chain metrics to create a beautiful chart like this. When it's green, super bullish. When it's red, super bearish. When it's orange, Orange, not great, but not not so bad. Okay, currently orange at 58k, so we are a little bit below that. If we do close this next week, probably below 55, something like this, I can imagine this turning red, which will be devastating for most of the market because it just means that we're 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 going sideways slash down for probably the next two months if we're looking at electricity annualized consumption index here we can see that uh yeah it has had a bit of a downward slope all this means is miners are spending less money on electricity to mine bitcoin if we're looking at the liquidation heat map, we are seeing a lot of people have opened very risky longs, I would say. <laughs> right, as this pump did come through, we have massive longs come through and uh, yeah, that has only thickened over time. So maybe we do revisit the low 50s just to kind of liquidate these guys, get the leverage junkies out before hopefully a recovery uh, or just obliteration in the Bitcoin markets. If you are looking for trades every single day, guys, then I do update you on my Patreon, which is completely free. You just press follow, okay? No payment required and I'll give you one Bitcoin signal every weekday. If we are just looking at the general market of altcoins, we can see Brett banging it up 42%. Really, really good. Uh, this is why I said, guys, if you're opening grid bots in times like this and you've got a little bit of leeway and really you only need spot, right? Because, I mean, you're looking at ridiculous gains. Uh, this is a great strategy, right? So uh, looking at those altcoins in the crash, setting up a grid bot and then going from there and just riding the volatility, making loads of money. Uh, this is really the way to go with this. If we are looking into the news, guys, we are just looking at pretty standard stuff here across the board. It's it's, it's Bitcoin trying to recover, the, the media trying to be bullish about it. Uh, but if we look back, everyone is just super bearish. And we can see these top three articles on the left hand side, right? Bitcoin tumbles to 53k, Bitcoin dips under 50k, uh, Bitcoin plunges under 60k, right? So it's really just market updates, which we're doing anyway on this channel. So I'm not really going to spend too much time on this. All right, guys, let's jump into the charts and jump into the trades that we're looking for here. As you guys know, with my position, right, I am DCAing from this point, this from this hash rate point, right? When we got this long signal, I've been DCAing in, not with a crazy amount, okay? Uh, again, I'm, I'm like 10% exposed to crypto right now. So this, this is really, it's not a problem, this dump, all right? I said previously, I'm not really gonna be exposing myself until we break the all-time high uh, massively, right? So the big investment comes when we break all-time high, we enter price discovery, and we also had uh, this pattern here, right, that we were targeting for a trade. 
We didn't get there, so we didn't lose, uh, and that's great, right? I mean, obviously, we've lost on the DCA, but it's been a fantastic year. We're in profit overall, right? But let's jump into this, right? Looking at this, we did complete the measure move, right, on the dump down. Uh, this is obviously an area where we have that buy pressure come in, so that's pretty standard. Okay, but now that is done, we can essentially just get rid of uh, most of this stuff here, right? So uh, we can get rid of this. Uh, and uh, actually, yeah, we can get rid of that as well. What we're going to do here is actually just have this horizontal here, right? So we've got a horizontal here. Um, it's not fantastic in terms of uh, correlation and in terms of hitting it loads of times because uh, obviously this was a dirty, disgusting crash that we had. And then we had the, prump, the, the Trump pump, right? Uh, so what we will say with this is, yes, we are still going to be looking at that daily candle close area. Okay, we have tried to violate that area, but we did not close that candle above it yesterday. So uh, this is looking a lot more better down to 55k again after testing up to 56.3 uh, this can still recover normally when we do get massive wicks like this towards the downside we can actually absorb that wick towards the other side and still dump of course right but if we can absorb that wick towards the other side and finish above 56k it's a lot better but again not looking super bullish based on the fact that we closed underneath this yesterday okay uh, i've been doing this a long time guys so uh yeah i mean i've, I've experienced many many crashes like this okay i've, I've been doing this eight years right so uh yes we experienced this covid crash this was a fantastic one and my main point here is to really look at grid bots okay grid bots will be the way forward here particularly on altcoins uh, if we do find a scenario like this where we do want that v-shaped recovery and the u.s fed do save everyone right then we'll be looking for this kind of volatility to come through in these areas right so uh, from this crashing area what i'm looking for to enter that grid bot and initiate the grid bots to begin it right uh, what we're going to be looking for is a higher low to come through something like this that's the wrong tool there we go yeah something like this a higher low to come through if we can find that then from that point we're essentially just going to be opening a grid bot from that area with the support being there and then uh, basically having that grid open from our great our, our breakdown point okay so if we do go all the way up to uh, where we are right now come on mate where are we going where are we going Let's just do this quicker. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful stuff, right? So if we do look at where we are right now, we are nowhere near a daily higher low. Okay, we, we need to go up first, then come down, and then make that higher low. Uh, something like this, right? Once that has happened, what we'll be looking to do is actually initiate a grid bot uh, from these points. So we'll have our, our buys down here from this area, and we will range it up to essentially our, our breakdown point, which is a debatable topic. You could say it is the top here at 68, uh, or you could say it's at 65.5. So having a wide grid bot here on Bitcoin uh, will be fantastic for kind of uh, finding those uh, those trades in this volatile period. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing this, I may even have the grid bot uh, all the way down to 44K. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we do still have structure, okay? Uh, I know it looks super bearish. I know it's crazy, crazy bearish across the board. All right, but uh, what we can say here, guys, is that we do have this structural line coming through. If I do just get rid of the uh, the wad machine, because we'll get to the, the cross in a minute. But uh, as you can see here, right, with our lows, 16K, we tapped, and then we tapped 25K, creating a trend line here, okay? We have not got underneath that trend line, all right? And usually, if we do look at previous bull markets, like this one here, right, we can see that, uh, yeah, this is the line you really want to be watching before entering a bear market. And we have not broken from that line. Uh, we haven't broken down uh, on that line. Same thing here. Okay, this is the 14K run. And then same thing here. If we do bring this up, we can see that, uh, yeah, similar thing there. So in terms of where we are with structure, it's actually still pretty bullish. Obviously, black swan, very bad. <laughs> okay, but uh, in terms of structure, we're actually okay. Okay, yes, we've lost that kind of parabolic structure like we've done many times before uh, in previous bull markets. But as long as we do stay above this line here, then uh, yeah, I'm going to make this a little bit thicker just so everyone can see. There we go. Yeah, so we can see it. We, we are still chilling on that front all right and that line is down at 44.6 okay uh, so that's one area to watch the other area to watch here is this purple linear regressional growth curve uh, from this kind of rainbow chart uh, that that a lot of people know and love right you can see this we love to oscillate around this purple line particularly before going parabolic okay so the fact that we're above it uh, and we did have a, a very very quick start to this run this thing just banged it up very very quickly so as long as we're above that 44k area right now it's actually not that bad yes it's bad if you are banging in longs 10x leverage 
and losing all your money, right? Yes, it's bad. But uh, if we do expect some more downwards uh, price action, right? Nothing crazy, nothing down to our, our absolute support at 30K. But if we do expect some kind of trickle down over the next month or so with September coming through, right? And you guys know September going into Q4, uh, that can often be a time where people sell Bitcoin to essentially uh, avoid tax or book losses, stuff like this, right? Um, and uh, yeah, if we can get something like this, then as I said, this grid bot strategy will be fantastically profitable because from this line here at 45, I, I'm certain we get a bounce, okay? Unless the world economic, uh, unless the entire world econ economically and financially just gets obliterated, right? Where everything goes to zero. Um, and in that case, you should probably be a lot more worried about other things than Bitcoin, okay? Uh, but unless that does happen, I do think we get saved here. And normally the way they save uh, most assets, not just Bitcoin, but the stock market, right, is um, they print money, right? They print money, they inject it into the markets, the, the price goes up, right? I mean, inflation goes up massively, but the price goes up, restoring the investor's confidence and then stabilizing the market. That's how this works, right? That's how, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but that's, that's how most finance in the world works, okay? In terms of stocks and Forex and uh, everything, right? Everything, indexes, all that stuff. So uh, what we will say is, yes, I am still looking at this 45K as a, a pretty decent support and I will be banging in longs here, of course, right? But as of right now, in terms of the state of Bitcoin, yes, looking to set up a grid bot after a daily higher low, right? Uh, and if it's something like this, it's probably not going to be great, okay? Uh, but, I mean, we still, we still should be eyeing up a grid bot because uh, this momentum should slow down eventually anyway even if we do continue this crash even if this is a dead cat bounce this momentum should slow down sooner or later uh, so as we get closer to this line we'll be setting up this grid bot okay higher low will be fantastic for that okay but yeah as as we uh, as we get closer to this line then uh, yeah we set up the grid bot we let bitcoin oscillate between i would say 45k and uh, and 65k then we just collect money we just collect money. We accumulate just like the market makers, just like the bankers, just like the stock market boys do. Okay? We, we play it by the book. We accumulate via a grid bot where we just buy and sell all the way through. And then from that point, once Bitcoin does eventually break above this trend line, that's when we begin to look at another parabolic run. Okay? But as of right now, it does look pretty bleak. What we will say is, uh, yes, this can still V-shape. It can. And uh, the on-chain doesn't look bad at all. We are still seeing that hash rate above both of these moving averages. If it's below both of the moving averages, then we get a crossing scenario, a capitulation event, right? Uh, but as of right now, the miners don't seem that phased. So maybe they know something we don't. Uh, and from that point, from that point, yeah, we are still looking for that massive long at 74K upwards, right? And, and this, this for me is what I'm reserving a lot of my money for because uh, yes, I can be setting up this grid bot here and I will, but I'm not gonna be throwing it all in, okay? I'm, I'm gonna be uh, managing my risk here. And then once we do break that all time high, that is really when we go parabolic. And I see that happening. I know it might be a bit, a bit long term for some of you guys, but as a trader, you gotta be thinking long term. I see that happening within the next six months i would say even less maybe four months okay uh, so what we will say with that is yes when that does happen that's really when you want to smash it in if you smashed it in before then then i mean maybe you risked too much right again i did say i was building a position but uh yes the reason why we're not risking much here is because we haven't got uh above that 74k and that, i did stress that last week as well right uh, so <clears throat> what's next here this is the this is the depressing part Death cross time, okay? Death cross time, not looking fantastic. So this green line is your 50 SMA. Okay, we've changed these to SMAs here for this video. Uh, so 50 SMA and your 200 SMA. So if we are looking at this right now, these are poised. They're poised for a death cross. Usually when we do get a death cross, what will typically happen is we'll get uh, a bit of a magnetism towards that cross, okay? Because when people see this death cross, they love to just go short, okay? So if this does play out like that, then uh, yeah, I mean, we will get a bit of magnetism towards that and then it will absolutely obliterate. So what we'll be looking for here 
is a high to be put in. We'll be looking for any kind of structure uh, on that kind of four hour, 12 hour time periods, right? We're looking at the daily here for simplicity, but uh, any kind of structure, any kind of trend line that gets broken uh, after we hit a death cross and we've pulled back towards it, then uh, we'll be looking for a short from that point downwards, okay? That is uh, gonna be a fantastic trade if it does play out, all right? But uh, yeah, death crosses are typically a lagging thing. Uh, there's, there's articles out there right now talking about how this death cross is, is way too late. It's way too late, guys. And this is this is big mainstream media uh, articles saying you can never trust the death cross. No, obviously, if you are a market maker uh, and uh, yeah, if, if, we, if you do see that death cross happening, then uh, maybe you do pull the rug earlier. Or, as I said, maybe you wait for the death cross so everyone goes short and then you pull it back to liquidate them, right? If You've got to think in terms of the mind of the market maker, right? Uh, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, what I will say, though, is if we do get above about 65k as we talked about, right, then this death cross, if it hasn't happened, right, will kind of... Um, negate itself it will invalidate and then we basically ride up from that point uh, right up off of them uh, it, it's not always the case sometimes we can do something like this and, and completely trap everyone this is why i don't really trade death crosses but it is important uh, to know how to trade them uh, in in that aspect right and that is waiting for that pullback towards them wait for that magnetism wait for the structural break wait for any kind of four hour lows to break as well and then find that short from that point okay but just be just be careful of course, because the markets are crazy right now and uh, you're going to have way better luck just looking for a grid bot strategy in this area, uh, just generally, right? Besides that, short term, we're going we're gonna to give this some time. Obviously, uh, if we are looking at the, let's just take a look at the one hour here, right? If we are looking at the one hour, this does look a lot more like it's going to dead cat, but uh, the fact that we're above this, uh, this structural line is good, okay? It is good that we've tried to recover here. We've got above the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band. We've got above the 15 minute volume weighted ATR band. And now if we can get above this four hour, I do see a bit of a pump coming through all the way up to 60K. Uh, and then the, the, the thing to kind of tangent off of that is this, right? So we've got the CME gap here. Uh, we did talk about this for ages uh, a few weeks ago, right? Which is the CME gap uh, that was at 60K between 50 57.5 up to 60k, right? We said if that gets filled, fantastic. If you did find a short towards that level, good stuff, okay? Uh, and now, because of this crash over the weekend, we uh, we have an even bigger CME gap, <laughs> which is crazy, right? Uh, which is currently about 7%, okay? So that's a 7% gap. Uh, so yes, targeting 60k here to fill that gap does make sense, okay? So initiating a trade uh, and, and the the the, um, the criteria to get in that trade will basically be uh, any kind of resolution here on one hours, all right? So any kind of, uh, let's just get rid of that real quick. Yeah, any kind of um, push through, retest, break a high to really claim that, then uh, yeah, there will be a long that you could potentially target, but just be very, very careful uh, and take into account that death cross thing that I just did talk about. All right, that is gonna be it from me, guys. Um, let me just see where we're at. Yeah, this is a super long video, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the comedic aspect to that. Let me know in the comments. And if you did see the secret code here, then be sure to throw it in the comments because you'll be entered into the weekly giveaway that I do for you guys, all right? Uh, and what else you can do as well is go to Prime XBT. Prime XBT allows you to trade. This sounds so, <laughs> this sounds so uh, silly, but I actually really like it. Okay, so Prime XBT allows you to trade uh, on multiple different uh, areas, right? So it, it allows you to trade Forex, it allows you to trade indexes for stocks, and it allows you to trade crypto. So you can trade all three of those on one exchange. Fantastic stuff with leverage and stuff like that. It's a bit more of a traditional setup, but they also do trading contests, right? Free trading contests. So you enter the trading contest, they give you a simulated balance, and then if you win, which is super easy to win, by the way, guys, uh, if you win, then uh, you win 500 bucks, okay? So that's fantastic. That's something if you do want to kick off your trading journey and you are new to the trading game, feel free to check that out. Link in the description uh, because, yeah, it's free. It's free. And if you do sign up, you get a 100 bucks deposit bonus as well. If you do want to trade real money, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, really cool platform. Really liking it. Uh, I've been trying to make a big video for you guys where I enter the trading contest, but uh, they were full up this week. So I'm waiting for them to open the next one for next week so I can uh, do that. And, and yeah, we can compete to see who wins that trading contest. I'm not going to go easy on you guys. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to bang that. Okay, I want, I want that top three spot, all right? <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic one. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. And uh, what was the other one? Yeah, you could leave notifications on. You could if you want. I don't know. I don't, sometimes it gets annoying for me, so I don't like to. But uh, yeah, if, if you want to, feel free. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.